Hello, everybody. How are you doing? This is the end of November. <laughs> the end of November, November, the week of November 27th. We're going to take a look at some of the planets, some of the energy, some of the things that that I think are important. If you look in this chart, I know I'm jumping right into it, but we look at everything's in Saggy now, right? But, you know, we, first of all, Cirrus. That's what, how we feel nurtured, Cirrus. By the way, before I forget, for those of you who ask, a lot of folks ask me certain questions like, that glyph, what does it mean? There's a couple of videos up on the channel. Um, you can go to the playlist and look for symbols and glyphs. That playlist that says symbols and glyphs or glyphs and symbols, however I have it worded. Um, it's a two-part series, and I think they're almost like an 50 minutes for each video because I do a lot of symbols and glyphs, right? So if you're a serious seeker of knowledge, you'll go there and watch those videos. And it will explain some of the things that you see here where I might not give a lot of time to because it might not be either relevant or I don't think of it, it doesn't pop in strongly, whatever the deal is. But always go there when you have those, uh, when you feel like you need more information. How's that? But I, because I love the questions, definitely put the questions in the comments. Because uh, if you have that question, many others do too, trust me. You were the brave one who asked. <laughs> yeah, I'm marking off everything in Saggy. You see this? And then there's that one last glyph that we don't normally even talk about. So the very first one, Cirrus. Second one, Mars third one that's the symbol for the sun fourth one this is a symbol for vulcan there's two different kind of there's a couple of different vulcan or volcanus spots in a chart this one you're always going to normally see it between the sun and mercury which is the one i kind of track anyway it just normally adds a level of intensity think of vulcan as the forger of metals fire and can change and transform it's got kind of a scorpio vibration to it right if you think about it Add heat, apply pressure, and you can change something that is very hard and change the shape and the form of it. And then we got Mercury. Mercury, news, information, Mercury. So this is where everything is, well, not everything. We haven't talked about Venus yet. So kicking this week off, we've got all of these items here in Saggy. Now, to me, this is great because we are out of all that heavy Scorpio energy, that intense Scorpio energy. Yes, we still have some things in Scorpio. You see all the Scorpio stuff? Yeah, that's Scorpio in the black. I don't know where the hell that gray came from, but yeah. I'm trying to... And there's even some stuff here in the Scorpio that I didn't get to show you. It's just kind of hiding. Anyway, it's okay. It's one of those lots. But um, so there's still quite a bit in Scorpio. So the intensities don't necessarily uh, go away. This is Humea. She's all about change and transformation and uh, restoring order and balance and harmony, which is kind of great because she's in Scorpio. And this, is, this can be beneficial. Remember Scorpio, the wounds, old wounds? can be ancestral wounds for sure because it's something that's deep it's from the past your soul knows that your personality might not but your soul does and for many of us both our soul and our personality know it all too well right it's the wounds that the things we've been through the fam our family history even um this is a i wanted to say cupid but it's sappho s-a-p-h-o the two venuses it's beauty love harmony lyrics music um it's feminine to feminine energy it's feminine to feminine yeah so it's it's connected right now it's very close these three this hawaiian goddess humea sappho and Pallas athena the female general Pallas athena thinks outside the box really good with maps can strategize very interesting especially when we think of battles and wars, right? Uh, but this is, again, a lot of 
strong feminine qualities. But look, that's not all. Persephone, she's home here. Persephone is at home here, right? She was abducted by Hades, taken down into the realm of Hades, which, by the way, is Scorpio because Pluto and Mars both rule Scorpio energy. Okay? So it kind of makes sense when somebody is here and I say this is kind of their home. She spends half of her, half of the year here, right? Of whatever that is for that time frame. And so Persephone is one who is away from home, yet learns how to overcome the feeling of being isolated by making it a home no matter where she is. And so that's all feminine energy. That is all feminine energy in Scorpio. And so this I love because feminine energy has this extra creative ability, right? Has this extra creative ability to make stuff happen. And what will it make happen? It will change and transform what we're willing to fight over, how we're doing it, right? It will change and transform the hurts and the wounds, shit from the past, those vulnerabilities. It will change and transform and restore because Humea is here. So it doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but I am optimistic that something can occur to, to make that change. And look at all the stuff in red in Sagi, which is where we began this video. Now, the question is, where? what does all this mean here? Because these are the current transits. These are the personal planets minus Venus. We'll get there. Um, when we know something's in Sagi, here's a shortcut. I know you guys love to hear, I got a secret. Here's a shortcut. Here's an astrology tip. Tip number one in this video, when you see that you've got a cluster of something in a sign, ask yourself, okay, in general, what kind of a sign is this? What kind of energy is it? What kind of element is it, right? So a Sagittarius's energy is mutable. It likes to change. It doesn't, it's not flex, it, it is flexible. It is flexible. It's kind of opposite of Scorpio. Scorpio's like, I'm not budging. I'm not backing down. Sagittarius, on the other hand, it really wants freedom. And it will pretty much, it, it, would, it would go to, it goes to pretty far lengths, pretty far away, matter of fact, to get the freedom. It's all about taking a journey, taking a trip, a long journey, a long trip. It will travel which means it will go the distance. It's the marathoner. It will go the distance. You know, this is leaving the planet even, shooting up into space. We think of NASA when we see Sagittarius energy and astronauts. But it's also spirituality and religion and prayer. Sagittarius, it's higher learning. It is also the judicial system. So this is the judicial branch of your government. You follow? And because Mercury's at 25, the galactic center, you see the galactic center right there at 27. So when you have the galactic center at 27 and Mercury conjunct it, the galactic center is usually a point where something big occurs. And we hear about it because Mercury's the news. So it's social media. And then, you know, Jupiter being the ruler of Sagi, these can be people who are public figures, courtrooms, judges, politicians, right? Um, Mars is there, so Mars is our actions with our body, can represent the military or Marines or fighting. The sun is a person who was an authority figure. Uh, Sirius can be the food, how we nurture ourselves, but it is connected to the earth and food. Interesting, Sagittarius is traveling, possibly delivering long distances, right? Uh, makes me think of the aid that is needed in certain places where people are victims of war victims of countries desire for power and then the news and social media and talking and thinking this is siblings this is co-workers mercury siblings co-workers my next door neighbors my housemates my peers it is business and government it is the stock market it is the housing market right it's the markets in general going up and down looking at the statistics and the numbers and the data the data mercury is also described because it's the reporter, right? However, in Sagi, Sagi's the opposite. So it's a lot of opinions, a lot of judgments. These are the editorial pieces, which whether people realize it or not, the younger generation nowadays might not understand it. And even some of those old farts 
who haven't been in school in a long time, but the reporter was somebody who just showed up on the scene and took a picture, who reported the action, who reported what was said. They didn't give their commentary. They didn't give you their two cents. Sagittarius gives its two cents. You follow? So this is the editor, right? This is the editorial. This is me publishing a book. I have something to say, Sagittarius. Well, when you have Mercury in Sagittarius, you know, it's kind of like, wow, okay. So there could be a lot of unconscious judgment going on, a lot of opinion pieces. And so as humans, as us consuming the news, it's our job to be able to decipher the difference, right, of fact and crap, or is this actually just me being delivered the news, or is this, you know, just seeing the difference of an editorial piece, right, and the somebody opinion piece, as opposed to them just delivering you information without giving you their spin, as people say, their spin on it, right? Um, and there's nothing necessarily bad about that unless it's to manipulate your beliefs and manipulate your idea of truth, Sagittarius, truth and beliefs, philosophy on life, justice, freedoms, religion and spirituality. When it's used to manipulate, uh, that's kind of where I have an issue with it. And I would think lots of folks do too. Now, we're talking about Mercury kind of big because it's in its shadow zone. And I know a lot of you get confused about what the hell a shadow zone means. So real quickly, I, and again, I'm gonna, you're going to see a video that's going to go deeper on this for you. So I'm going to cover it briefly here. Uh, Mercury, it begins its shadow zone at 22 degrees in Saggy. All right? So I'm just going to mark off 22 degrees in Saggy here like this. We're just going to say this is 22 degrees. All right? And then um, a cappy, eight degrees. So in other words, from 22 degrees in Saggy to eight degrees of cappy is the traveling zone, is the redo zone, is the shadow zone. It's the rerun zone. So Mercury will begin when Mercury did get here. Let me put it like that. When Mercury got here, okay, because in this video on the 27th, it's already at 25. So just a couple of days before Mercury hit 22 degrees. And so today here it's at 25. Well, I'm recording this video <laughs> like a month in advance. But so today or on the 27th, it's at 25. And then it's going to keep going and it's going to keep traveling. But we call it the redo zone because Mercury is going to then go backwards. You see that? It's going to go backwards. It's going to get to 8 degrees, between 8 and 9 degrees of Capricorn, and then it's going to go backwards. And then, once it gets to the 22 degrees of Saggy, it's going to go forward. So you see it's a redo zone. Mercury traveled. It first got here, it went here, then it stopped, then it went back all the way to here, then it stopped. And then it went forward again. So that zone is called the shadow zone or the redo zone or the rerun zone. It's like we are reviewing, redoing, looking over things again, watching it again, reading it again, going through the details again, even though we already did it two times prior, we're doing it again for a third time. That's why you need to know about it, even though the retrograde technically has not begun yet. It will not begin its retrograde movement until it gets here the first time. Once it gets here the first time, that's when it begins its retrograde. And it won't begin its retrograde until 8 degrees of Capricorn. You follow? However, because we know it's going to be traveling back to the original 22 degrees of Saggy, we know that if we made some choices or decisions, if we had options on the table back then around... November, around Thanksgiving, matter of fact, the week of Thanksgiving, right? So if we were talking about things, especially with business and finance, with our neighbors and our siblings, news, learning, information, sharing shit on social media, saying, hey, look at this, look at this, thinking about vlogging and blogging, the stock market, like all the keywords I already gave for Mercury, whatever information you were sharing, whatever information you, get, information you got, it may have been incorrect because it was definitely missing some details. I want to emphasize the shortcut again. I know I kind of went off on this other tangent, but this is mutable energy, okay? It's fire energy, right? 
its element, I should say, is fire, and it's mutable fire. So it's flexible, it's changeable. Remember what I said about the keywords for Sagittarius, my beliefs, my philosophy on life, my religion, my truth, uh, my ideas about my future. That's also Sagittarius. It's known as the seer, right? So it's fiery. It's even like I'm, am I, I'm, I'm a prophet or I'm getting downloads or I speak to God energy or creator, whatever that is for you, something higher than yourself. Um, when we think about our future and the future of our freedoms, the freedoms of the future, right? We think our mind goes wild. And so Mercury is really fired up here in, in this energy and it has to be cautious. The mind, Mercury is your mind. It has to be cautious because when you connect air, Mercury, to fire, what happens? When you connect fire and air together, right, shit goes up in flames. Now, that's not to say explosions, but just think of a, a rocket, right? And that's got that rocket power, that extra boost to go up, right? There's a mixture, right? Fire and oxygen. Uh, oxygen is extremely flammable, right? So Mercury is going to be moving like lightning here and things will change. And what will that affect directly in your life? The mutable signs. What are the other two mutable signs? The other two mutable signs, I'm going to outline them in blue here. It's Virgo. And yep, there's the red square showing up for me. Yep, Virgo. And so in Virgo, what do we see right off the top? We know we got Black Moon Lilith there and a partnership, Juno, a practical partnership in Black Moon Lilith. So we just got to always keep that in mind, okay? Because Black Moon Lilith always throws a monkey wrench in something, right? Uh, partnership, Virgo, Juno there. It wants a practical partnership. It should make sense. But all this stuff in Saggy, all that stuff in Saggy has been taking turns squaring and angling all of this, throwing stress and tension and making it difficult. It just has. It just has. Good news is that Cirrus is at one degrees here. So it's pulling away from being squared from Regulus. Regulus, zero degrees of Virgo. So when we think of the humanitarian aid uh, to Gaza or wherever else humanitarian aid needs to go to that may have been having roadblocks and difficulties, Cirrus pulling away now because it's at one and this Regulus will stay at zero. That Regulus is a very slow mover. It will stay at zero. Um, this Cirrus going higher in numbers means it's no longer getting the square from Regulus. Regulus is very powerful, very strong. It's very powerful. It's like the one in charge, the one who calls the shots. That's Regulus. And matter of fact, Virgo is connected to serving the needs, the, the practical daily needs. So it is food, it is clothing, it is water, it is shelter. It is your practical, it is your essentials. Your essential needs would be Virgo energy for sure. Um, so... That's good, right? And Mars is pulling, like all that's pulling away from there because the numbers are all higher than zero, okay? Now, there's also a square. Saggy also squares the other mutable sign, and the other mutable sign is Pisces. So I will get the other mutable sign in blue so that you guys can see the Pisces energy on the chart really clearly. Okay, you see that? If I pull it back a little bit, then you kind of get the big picture. You see the big picture of how everything angles, right? So all the stuff in Pisces, that's why the food thing, because look, Saturn was at zero, still is at zero. It's a slow mover. Saturn opposing the opposing Regulus. So, th so that Cirrus and the food thing, like it was, it was receiving a lot of stress and tension, a lot of stress and tension because it was coming from Saturn and from Regulus, you see? So that's gonna be easing off here, for sure. And it already did, because Cirrus is already at one here. But we still have some other things in Pisces and in Virgo at 14 and 22 and 24 and 29 even. So the news information, Mercury at 25 is getting squared by Neptune. The day before it was a bigger square, like that weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I'm sure I did that in the video already. Uh, Neptune is really strong here because it's retrograding really slowly. But then Mercury now, once it goes and it's going to be conjunct the galactic center this week, 
it's already conjuncted here, it's at 25. But it's also getting a square from Hercules, which is also, you know, Hercules is trying to do the spiritual work in Pisces. It says, let's think about the needs, let's think about the sacrifices, let's, 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 let's see the unity among all of us. Let's understand that, you know, like, we're all human. You know, we just, we need the bare basics, right? And um, we need to be smarter. And we need to not only be smart, but think more about the cost and elevate our desires. But Pisces is also public, politicians, right? Can be people of the cloth as well, but people that are in the spotlight and public figures. I didn't finish my word. I said public, public figures in general. So this week, there is still... There is still the stress and the tension from all the stuff in Saggy now, which, by the way, was, you know, all the stuff in Saggy was in Scorpio before, right? Right. Which meant it was training all the Pisces energy. Well, now it's squaring all the Pisces energy, okay? So we think of overseas when we think of Pisces. We think of music. We think of sound. We think of faith, our beliefs. Right? We think of Pisces where it's prayer and meditation, where it's understanding, understanding and feeling our unity and our oneness. We got all that stuff in Saggy squaring that. So it's a time where we have to really practice our faith. We can't just talk about it. We got to be about it. We, you know, we got to do all the things we need to do, all the little extra things to help that along. Because all those planets in Saggy, they're going to move. Okay? They're not going to stay there forever. They're not going to stay there forever. They're going to move. There is a lot, but guys, this happens every year. This is not this is not something out of the ordinary. I know we feel like it is. I know we, you know, we yeah, we're definitely in like, you know, <laughs> we are living in times where generations to come will reading about these things in the history books. I get it, but you know, in terms of, oh my gosh, we have all of that squaring Virgo and squaring Pisces that happens every season. It's part of a cycle, okay? It is part of a cycle. Good news is all this stuff over here in Virgo, I'm sorry, in Scorpio, my brain, all this stuff over here in Scorpio, feminine energy is trining all the water. It's trining Pisces and it's trining the moon, Cancer. It's a trine. And so that can bring some ease. These are the emotions, the emotions of the public. When, when we talk about cancer energy, all the stuff over here in blue, the sign of cancer, right? I'll outline Pisces again, but this time in green, and I'll outline Scorpio again energy, this time in blue, or green, I'm sorry. And so that's all, that's like a nice, beautiful, grand water trine. All right. And so when we think water, it's spirituality. It is emotions. It is the past. It is feminine. It's feminine. It can be warm. It can be nurturing. Right. It can be understanding. It can be uh, forgiveness because stuff in Scorpio is still powerful stuff, powerful feminine energies and strategist energy in Scorpio, still training Pisces energy, training the cancer energy. So, so this I'm really happy for. And Uranus now, all the energy in Scorpio that was in the opposition to the planet Uranus, um, it's, it's not as intense. There's less there because it's all moved into Sagi, you see? So Uranus is still retrograding. It's still doing its thing. And here we also have Jupiter who adds to things. And this is Taurus, which is our comfort, our creature comforts the earth. Right? Remember, Uranus' job is to shake up what we value, our values, our physical material, the earth, the world, the food, the creature comforts, right? That's its job. Um, Venus. Venus rules this. So let's go see where Venus is. I've been talking about Venus. Venus has been a big player for a while now. So let's go see where she's at. Look, she's up there. She's still in Libra. Venus also co-rules Libra. So she's strong here. And Venus is about peace and harmony. She wants to make peace, right? So if you have something you want to fight for, something you truly believe in, something where you're like, okay, enough is enough, right? Protesting is good. 
peaceful protesting. No weapons, no craziness, you know, harm none, let it be done type of thing. Peaceful protesting. When people show up in numbers, that's when the businesses, that's when the government wakes up and is like, oh, shit, look how many people showed up. Damn. Uh, you know, there's more of them, right? Yes, absolutely. So having Venus here in the sign of Libra, which is all about equality and fairness, I like this. I like it a lot. What I will say is here we are this week. This is a big week. This is a big week because this Venus at 21, 59 is actually at 22, which means she's conjunct the south node here. You see this? South node's at 24. So they're not matching numbers, but by two degrees, they're conjunct in my book. The south node is a release and a let go. I'm releasing and letting go something. And what? Something that I valued? A relationship. What sort of a relationship? Depending upon where the Libra energy is in your chart, what house is it in? I'll give you an example of myself. I've got Libra energy in my sixth house. Sixth house is your day-to-day -day routines. What do you do in a day-to-day -day routine? You're releasing something, something's switching up. And because it's in the sixth house, I think Virgo. So it's probably going to have to do with a food routine, right? Maybe different shopping. Maybe some, certain things aren't available. Maybe getting a little bit more in the kitchen for some reason, right? Um, Venus is involved. Venus likes to be creative and she loves to bake. She loves to cook. She wants things to be beautiful and, uh, yeah, pretty crafty and creative with Venus energy in terms of food. And it can also it can be business partnerships. Partnerships. So if I was working at a job, a nine to five, uh, I can think of a job. I was baking. I was literally a baker. And so that job, oh my God. Loved it, loved it, loved it. This was that. So if I was still there and I st and I had this Venus hooking up with this, I would kind of be like, oh, wait a minute. Huh. Maybe I'm, you know, not going to be, maybe they're going to change my duties at the job because it's your duties, your tasks, your projects, those lists. Maybe the job itself was changing, you know, like maybe a location was changing in the job as far as I was going to be put to a different department because there's a release of something that has to do with that job. Now, could it be the job itself? Yeah, in different ways. And I'll give you the same example. That job, me no longer being a baker there, I left. I saw that as much as I loved it, I valued myself and my well-being more. And that goes with my mental and my physical. And so I had to walk away from that job as much as I loved it. I mean, yeah, there were some other circumstances, but... Without going into too many details about it, um, I had to walk away from it, so I had to release it. And man, I'm telling you, when I worked, when I did that job, I felt like I was in heaven, heaven, because that's a Venus in, in the Virgo energy. It was just, just, it, yeah, I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Now, how we create and what we create with and, and what ways we create, that's different for everybody, okay? But that's just to give you an example of how it could be a release. Okay, so find out where the Libra and energy is in your chart because the big release is this week for some of us. And those degrees would be, would be Venus, 22 degrees, because she's already conjunct. So it's between 22, 23, 24 degrees is where this big release conjunction happens. All right, and you know what? We might even say 21. Let's just go ahead and say 21 degrees as well. For the hell of it just to be safe because then if nothing happens then you can be like okay I, I you know i prepared and it wasn't as big of a deal as i thought but but if you kind of have a heads up it doesn't feel so like shocking it's like okay i kind of had a feeling and it, like i said it could be a release of a certain food even like i know depending upon what's going on in my life and where the planets are there are certain foods certain substances um that sounded bad substances but there are certain things I partake in and or that I do not partake in right and I'm like okay I can't do that right now or yeah I can do this right now or I need to do this right now but it's a release of something that you valued and think of the five senses when we think of Venus okay but in Libra fairness and equality equality so the good thing about Venus in Libra still is that she is communicating and talking because it's in air so she's talking and communicating with Gemini She's talking and communicating with Aquarius. 
and they all trying each other. So that strong energy of an open communication is still present. It is still possible. And this is good. Anytime communications end, that is when things go just south because it's communication is everything, right? If we stop the line of communication, that's the problem. On a last note, what I do want to add here is that the south node, I'm sorry, the north node over here, take a look at this, the north node in Aries at 24, which is normal because the south node I just showed you with Venus is at 24. That's normal. But this north node is in fire. And what did we just talk about that's in fire? Do you remember? I'm going to move some things over, so bear with me here because I want you to see all the fire that we have by transit. All the fire by transit right there. We're going to go pink for that in Aries. Selassia, Selassia, female Neptune. Chiron, the wounds from the past, maybe even another lifetime. Uh, Sultan's victory, South Node, Eris, the warrior, still part of the North Node, which is why you see protests and it, it's kind of, um, yeah, global protests even because Selassie is there. I'm sorry, Eris is there, E-R-I-S. And Eris is all about, I'm angry and I'm tired of my voice not being heard. So when it's conjunct the North Node, yeah. And so this, these stay conjunct until 2024, okay? until 2024. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of the unrest that we're in, but but because the North Node is in fire still, I showed you how we had all the Sagittarius energy in fire. You see? And matter of fact, at the beginning here of this week, Mercury at 25 meant that that preceding weekend, Mercury was trining, was being trined by the North Node. So that Mercury energy is really about the body and the freedoms of the body and people taking actions because it's the North Node trining. It's a trine from the North Node to Mercury. Okay. But this, again, this would have been the weekend of, but because Mercury moves on, she's part, that North Node at 24 there, that's part of the retrograde. Remember I talked about the retrograde at the beginning of this video? It starts at 22 degrees. The retrograde starts at 22 degrees in Saggy. Okay? So when Mercury goes backwards and then goes forward again, she will still be having conversations every time she hits 22 degrees of Saggy, 22, 23, 24. She'll still be having conversations, direct conversations with the North Node in Aries, which is my appearance and my body. This is culture. This is ancestry and our heritage. This is, I need to be free. Take these chains from me. I'm tired of being in bondage. Countries, and I say it that way because Sagittarius is foreigners, foreign lands, and foreign countries. So for wherever it is that you live, whoever you look at and think, oh, they're the foreigners, and look at what they're going through. In a way, it's global, right? In a way, everybody is kind of right the upset like it's it's a it's a everyone's experiencing a lot of similar things but maybe in different ways it might look different but it at the end of it it's all the same okay and so the freedoms and mercury angling uh this is trying energy trying so things can occur things can happen and it's communication it's news but because it's the North Node, it kind of is very promising. Aries is optimistic. It will fight. And Sagittarius is very confident. And it's using the rule of law and the judicial system. So there might be some rules and some judgments, some passing of laws. And the only other thing I want to add to that is, is again, Mercury. Because Mercury has to go backwards. Whatever we hear about, I'm trying to dig my Mercury out. Whatever we hear about, remember, she's got to go forward, then she's got to go back, then she's got to go forward again. So whatever we're hearing this week and this preceding weekend, the 24th, the 25th, the 26th, over Thanksgiving, that stuff's going to change. This Mercury has to go here, get some information, go back here, get some more information, and then come back here. And that's not until January. 
That's a couple of weeks into January. Go to the Mercury Retrograde video to get the details on that. Um, but that's not all. All the stuff in Saggy, Mars, Cirrus, the Sun, all that in Saggy is going to trine the North Node. That's all going to talk to the North Node. It's all going to talk to Chiron. It's all going to talk to the North Node. It's all going to it's it's going to aspect all of this. Aspect means it's going to be talking to it. A line of communication is open because when it moves, it gets to the matching degree and it says, hey, we got a phone call all of a sudden. We can see each other. We can talk or we can even meet each other and have a conversation. And they understand each other because they're all fire signs. The Aries energy says, I want to start and initiate. The Sagittarius says, I'm willing to do it overseas. I'm willing to go far for it. I'm willing to go on that journey. I'm going to take this quest. It's wisdom, it's knowledge, it's freedoms, it's philosophy, it's truth. So the carryover themes are kind of the same because Venus is still in, in, in Libra and the nodes are still at 24. But the shift is major here because in November now, everything's gone into Saggy. Sagittarius season began like a week before this. Okay, and so it's going to be a little bit of time, but when we go into December, we'll still have the sun and Mars and Cirrus all training all the Aries energy, all training it. So it's the beliefs about my body and the freedom, my identity and my body autonomy. Again, feminine energy, very strong in, in, the, in, the, re in the reading. And it's going to stay strong. It's going to stay quite strong for a while because the planets here in Scorpio are not especially fast movers. Okay? So it's that combo, that combination of complex times. But if we focus ourselves and calm down the negativity and, and focus on what is truly important, we can find a path forward.